Hey, hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for our next video in our How to Play series on the German Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 7 York Class Cruiser. The York Class Cruiser is a paper design cruiser that was part of the initial drawings for the Deutschland Class Panzerschiffe. The initial plan called for a 10,000 ton cruiser built with 11 inch guns, however during the design proposal the 210 millimeter guns that were already in service on the SMS Blüche were used instead. Well I guess I should say actually more accurately those guns would have been, um, the, the design existed at the time but the, the Blüche did not as um, she basically they scuttled her along with a whole bunch of other German ships and um, a scap of flow with the, the surrender of the German Navy after World War I. Um, beyond that, the ship does bear a, a remarkable resemblance to the Tier 8 Admiral Hipper class cruisers. However, uh, there's no real evidence to suggest that they were ever, you know, sharing a common, common lineage. At all. In fact, uh, the Hipper class is significantly longer and larger in displacement, so not really, uh, beyond just looking very similar, not really any evidence to suggest that they actually were the same basic design principle, just updated and modified. Uh, because this is a paper ship, there is no service history because none of them were built, although I'm sure we could go off on a tangent about the Graf Spee. I will definitely ignore that for right now since that is definitely deserving of its own video. In terms of the in-game play performance of the York class cruisers, this is the first 8-inch plus gunned cruiser in the German line, again neglecting the Graf Spee. Um, this is all in the tech tree. And as a result, uh, she's got some interesting quirks. However, as an interesting aside, we finally get a modern gun layout, whereas on the previous Nuremberg, uh, the, uh, sorry, Nuremberg, the, uh, you had the six inch guns, but they were, you had two turrets that were mounted in the back and only one up front. So we have a, a two, two combination, ABXY for those of you in, in naval design. And this configuration has some distinct advantages. It retains the same firepower going forward as it does going aft, where the previous design did not. So if you're Carrying over some of your tactics from Nuremberg, uh, it's uh, a little bit... You're going to have to do some readjusting on it. The ship does kite reasonably well. The gun angles aren't terrible, but I think the ship is a far better charger than it is a retreater. The, the gun angles going backwards aren't nearly as favorable as the gun angles going forwards, mostly because of these guys right here. And that's not to say that you can't fire over them at longer ranges, but at closer ranges, it, it, it definitely uh, does not like it. So going forward is a lot better than going backwards. <laughs> uh, also, as an interesting aside, the AP on this ship at long ranges is terrible. Uh, that's being quite nice about uh, saying it. Basically, at longer ranges, you're going to find yourself shooting high explosive far more frequently than you are going to find yourself shooting AP. At least I would hope so. And the reason for that is simply because of the way that the shells, the shell drag on these, the way it works. Um, the shells go out and they shoot relatively flat in a tight cluster until you get to about 12k in range. And then all of a sudden it was like, um, I want to be the Des Moines today. And then it just, you know, comes in. A, you get a real steep angle of fall, but there's just no pen value to it at that range. They just lose so much penetration at long range. The HE, it has the same arcs, but at least with the HE, when it explodes, you have a chance of doing fire. Also, the HE on this ship does have a unusual, for the German line anyway, it has a higher base fire chance as well as a higher base damage. And I suspect that's because these are 210 millimeter batteries as opposed to 203 millimeter batteries that we're going to see on Hipper on up. And so uh, that definitely plays a role into it. That, that damage, that HE shell damage, is a 2,900, whereas Hipper, you can see here, is 25. So 400 more damage for 7 more millimeters of explosive. Um, 
Anyway, <laughs> moving on. The AP does at close range. It works extremely well. It does a lot of damage to anything that presents a broadside profile. Uh, this is especially true of cruisers. You can rack up some very large damage counts uh, on cruiser-heavy matches, especially if you happen to get in a match in which you can actually utilize that AP against broadside targets. Uh, thankfully, being 8-inch gun, sh you know, 8-inch shells, you can pretty much penetrate most of the Tier 7 and below cruisers from the front with it, so that's not usually too much of an issue. Uh, you can just go right on ahead and poke them. <laughs> Uh, she is also extremely maneuverable with a very tight turning radius, uh, but the downside is she bleeds speed like crazy in a turn. So while you can make extremely tight turns, getting away from stuff once you have made that turn is extremely difficult, and her low top speed at 32 knots also does not help. <laughs> That's that's kind of slow at tier 7. I mean, it's not super slow, but it, it's not as fast as some of the other cruisers at this tier. She also has, uh, I would say, a reasonable durableness when she's angled. I mean, it, she's not the most durable Tier 7 cruiser. Uh, that obviously goes to Miyoko, which is a significantly more durable cruiser when angled. However, uh, York does have one distinct advantage over Miyoko, and that is that she has a turtleback armor scheme. And that turtleback armor scheme means that when you get into close-in engagement fights, you are very likely to resist any Citadel hits at close ranges. The downside, of course, is that any shells coming in steeper than about, I don't know, we'll say 30 degrees, are going to penetrate this thinner deck, which, if I can get there, is only 30 millimeters. So main armor belt is 80 millimeters. The main armored deck is a sloped 30 millimeter deck. And so... Yeah, you, you can survive some close-range AP hits from battleships and from cruisers. However, anything at longer ranges is more likely to get a Citadel hit. And just as a side note, uh, any battleship that really gets any angle, like range shot at you, like 10k plus at your broadside, you're probably going to be eating Citadels because there's just not enough armor between these two things to actually mitigate that. So... Expect Citadel hits if you're broadside, uh, but <laughs> I've got an interesting video and it'll probably crop up in one of my Z Battles montage later of me like literally shrugging off 16 inch shells from an Iowa and a Missouri. <laughs> like they land four shells and only do 3,200 damage. One of them bounced off of the rear belt, the other two penetrated for over. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, made in German. Anyway. Like the preceding cruiser, she also carries 6K torpedoes, 12 of them to be exact. They have very generous firing arcs for torpedoes, which is pretty standard for the German cruiser lines from here on out. Um, so that's always nice. You've got the ability to really charge. However, getting in close range with this ship can be quite frustrating because the turret traverse is slow. Like, not battleship slow. It's like Miyoko slow. It's not it's not a ship that does extremely well in brawling. It relies almost entirely upon Alpha Strike with AP at close range on broadsides. Um, you probably only get one of those salvos off, but it mostly relies upon having a boatload of torpedoes. No pun intended. Overall, while she's not the best Tier 7 cruiser, she is a decent Tier 7 heavy cruiser. I would probably rank her as second from the bottom. I, th I think she's a little bit better than Pensacola is. She's certainly far more forgiving than Pensacola is. Pensacola has the advantage of, you know, those American piercing rounds, but uh, sometimes Pensacola... It doesn't matter how angled you are, you will just eat a Citadel regardless. York, you can at least angle against incoming fire and have a reasonably good chance of surviving it. So I, I think overall, I think she's better. She does have lo the longest range at Tier 7 of any of the regular cruisers, um, except for uh, Algerie, the French cruiser. So um, that, that certainly helps out quite a lot. Anyway, let's go over stats. She has 32,600 hit points, 80 millimeters of belt armor, as we talked about, a torpedo damage reduction of 10% thanks to her uh, torpedo bulge setup, which is similar to some of the later U.S. ones in the, the way it's laid out. 
the main battery consists of those four dual turrets with 210 millimeter guns. Uh, they have a max range of 17.3K, a reload time of 12 seconds, 180 degree turn time of 30 and a half seconds on the turrets. Um, AP does 5,500 damage, which is really quite good. The max uh, HE damage was 2,900. 16% chance it's going to be with Demo Expert, as well as, I think, the HE, the flags for increased fire percent chance. So, um, I think it's 12 base, I think is what it was. So, keep that in mind. Pretty, pretty decent. I mean, even 16% when fully upgraded is pretty good. Uh, she does have secondary batteries. They consist of four dual four-inch guns. They are these guys, right? Oh, wrong ones. <laughs> Helps to click on the right one. These guys right here, um, they do also serve as part of your AA defense. So uh, not too bad. A 4.7K range, that obviously is going to get bumped out if when you get advanced firing training. You can spec the ship for secondaries. However, I don't recommend it. Cruiser secondaries generally are not as useful or powerful as the battleship secondaries are. Um, torpedo tubes, as I already mentioned, she's got 12 torpedoes. They are in four triple launchers, on two on each side. They have a 6K range, 64 knot speed, 1.3 kilometer detection range, and 13,700 damage. In terms of anti-aircraft suite... Her AA is actually pretty decent, uh, especially when spec for AA. She does get defensive fire, which is extremely useful. The anti-aircraft battery consists primarily of 20 millimeter guns. However, there are some 40 mils thrown in there. And of course, those four inches, the 105s. Uh, so you got four single 20 millimeters. You've got eight dual 20 millimeters, four quad 20 millimeters. You've got six single 40 millimeters. Zoom in on those guys. Those kind of look familiar, don't they? They almost look like a Bofors mount. Hmm. Maybe those uh, those guys sold the designs for the Bofors to the Germans, like they did to pretty much everyone. <laughs> and then, of course, those uh, four dual um, 105 millimeter guns. Max speed, 32 knots. Turning circle radius, 650 meters. Rudder shift time of six and a half seconds. Detection range by sea of 11.8. Detection range by air of six and a half. Speaking of upgrades, I am going to be running Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 on this ship. That is going to keep your secondaries and your AA guns, primarily the AA guns, alive. Uh, this would normally require preventative maintenance on the ship captain, so uh, you, you've got a debate between Expert Loader and Preventative Maintenance if you plan on running this. I'm currently running Expert Loader on this, and one thing I found is that while the main guns do get taken out quite frequently... Uh, having that AA at late tier definitely is of major benefit when carriers are basically unchecked. Uh, aiming systems mod 1 for the second one. However, AA guns mod 2 is also a viable option in this. As I've spoken with in previous episodes of this How to Play series, main battery mod 2, I don't recommend it because the decrease in DPS, your damage per second, is too steep for the turrets traverse buff. Uh, you already have a really slow reload time. You don't need to make it any longer, uh, just to, especially not to get an uh, increase in turret speed. Secondary build, I mean, it's there if you want to, but the secondaries really aren't that good. So either um, either Aiming Systems Mod 1 or AA Guns Mod 2. Propulsion Systems Mod 1, definitely the standard at this uh, at for any cruiser. And decreasing the chances of your engines becoming incapacitated as well as the time it takes to repair them. Um, steering gears mod one, some people will make a, a good case for this personally. I find that losing propulsion is a bigger detriment in the long run than losing your steering. At least if you lose your steering, you can still kind of sort of steer the ship by speeding up and slowing down. Whereas, uh, losing your propulsion leaves you quite literally dead in the water and no amount of rudder change is actually going to fix that. Damage control systems mod one, I just, I don't find this to be enough of a reduction in fire and flood chance to actually be worth spending on a cruiser in the last slot steering gears mod 2 is definitely my recommendation um, that reduction in rudder shift time just helps this ship really dance and it dance does it i mean it, it dances really quite well uh, six and a half second rudder shift time with this module some people are going to say propulsion systems mod 2 for increasing the time it takes or uh, sorry decreasing the time it takes to get to full power 
unfortunately, this only matters, as far as I know, only matters to uh, that negative six to six knot range. It doesn't apply to anything else before or, at, or uh, after that. So that really only applies if you're going stationary. I know, I think the wiki says something about running this mod. Uh, that way you can speed out of turns better. That doesn't work that way. At least that's not the way it's been explained to me. Damage control systems mod 2. I definitely consider this to be useless on cruisers as well. While it does uh, decrease the time of recovering from flooding and fire, uh, having the steering gears allows you to avoid those altogether. All right, uh, enough of me talking about the ship in port. Let's look at a battle video. All right, so this battle is going to end up being a tier 7 battle, and I think it's on the map Haven. And this battle should show us a number of different strengths and weaknesses to the ship, mostly the AP and HE weakness differences. Sorry, differences. Um, there are a number of destroyers in this match, so that definitely complicates things because the rate of fire on most Tier 7 cruisers and the lack of overall number of guns definitely uh, hurts. It definitely hurts when you're trying to kill them because, one, while your HE is pretty good and your AP is pretty good too, um, you don't have the rate of fire to actually kill one fast enough. Light cruisers are definitely far superior at killing enemy destroyers than heavy cruisers are. There are some exceptions to this. Obviously, the later tier U.S. cruisers definitely get very good at killing them, especially with radar as well as uh, even to an extent Hindenburg and Rune both do reasonably well because they have higher rates of fire. So the map is Haven, and we are, well, normally on this map, I, I prefer to stay to the south. Um, Going to the north on this just takes you too far out of the fight. Going way to the south takes you too far out of this fight. Uh, so we're going to kind of split this a little bit, and we're going to see what ends up coming around the bends here. Wait for the map to kind of develop. Uh, this island that's right in front of me, I generally speaking don't like camping near this island because all it takes is for them to get really, really brave, and they can quite easily um, come around the side there and hit you for quite a lot of damage. Uh, sometimes even sink you from that position, because you don't exactly have any cover to leap to at that point. But for right now, we are we are going to go ahead... Oh, we got to avoid c crashing into a Farragut. Oh, high five. All right. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go up to this island here, kind of see th how things are. Hello. <laughs> Um, we're going to see how the battle kind of develops. You can see our team has opted to, well, at least one of our battleships has opted to go way north. Again, not a re real big on that choice. Looks like actually we got two of them going up that way. We have uh, Mutsu, and is that a Koenig? No. No, it's Congo. <laughs> well, I can't read it. Either way. <laughs> so, okay, we're finally at this island. Now what? Well, nobody's been spotted yet, and that makes me nervous. The decision definitely needs to be made whether or not we want to go to the north or to the south. You can probably guess which direction I'm going to go. Yep. <laughs> There's nobody there to the north to actually cover me should I go that way. However, this way we do have a Farragut here. He does have smoke. He does have the ability to lay said smoke. But we are actually going to sit at this island, and we are going to wait quite patiently. Now, this Farragut's managed to bait out the Mahan, uh, which is good to know where he's at finally. We do have a New York there. We do have a Payfast, I mean Belfast, over there as well. As well as another battleship. Well, 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 Mr. Congo. So we've got AP loaded, which I definitely don't recommend, at least, you know, right away. Uh, I think that was more or less a force of habit had it loaded from the previous game got all their destroyers are in this area holy cow so the ap at these closer ranges actually uh you know there's a wow that was a pretty good hit 2600 damage um the ap at these ranges it, it does work uh, you do have a reasonably good chance of getting um normal pens at this but the the further out you go the higher the arcs get and the less damage you're going to ultimately do. So there you can see we bounced off of a Belfast. Really? 
All right. Lost a main turret there due to an incapacitation from incoming battleship fire. That's kind of annoying. We bounce two more off of that Belfast. Uh, that's kind of sad and maddening. I mean, understatement. And at this point, it's like, oh my goodness, it's definitely time to leave and get the heck out of Dodge. You can see here I'm WASDing, definitely doing what I can to throw off enemy incoming fire, at least until I can get behind some cover. And we are going to shoot at Congo and see if we can't get some decent damage off of her. Oh, well, we're looking like we're going to get some decent damage. Uh, 2,900. Not too bad. Uh, touch confused as to how uh, adding a normal pen added three, only 300 damage, but uh, we won't ask these questions too loudly. And there's another 2,900 damage, except for we've now added two normal pens. Congo misses because clever, cheeky cruiser maneuverability. And now we're starting to bounce. <laughs> We should probably be switching to HE. Hey, look at that. We switched to HE. <laughs> we got La Galassonne here to to help distract. He's presenting a nice broad profile, a uh, broadside profile to that Congo, whereas I'm not. So hopefully that will mean that they will shoot at La Galassonne instead of me. Yes, that does indeed happen. However, swing and a miss, Congo. And now it's, uh, we got lots of target. We got a Pepsi Cola over here, and we've got uh, that Belfast. We've got a New York as well, but more importantly, Congo, you're getting into the danger zone. And we are going to launch torpedoes. However, I get the distinct impression that Congo is probably not going to find those torpedoes. As we try and get away from La Galassonne here, we're maxed over. We're shooting at the Belfast. Nope. Miss with those torpedoes. Yep, you're, you're... Thanks for the help turning. However, you're going to put me broadside, and I'm going to be very unhappy with this. <laughs> we are up to 15,000 damage. We do have a secondary hit. Nice. So torpedoes out again as I'm getting shot at by my teammate. And being forced broadside here. But. <laughs> oh man, that's rough. Hey! We got ourselves a kill with a torpedo. So we managed to take out the Congo with our surprise torpedoes. Uh, unfortunately, involved a healthy dose of grinding up a La Galassonne. And it unfortunately has put us uh, in a rather precarious position here when it comes to dealing with Mr. Payfast. We do have AP loaded. He is opening up. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. 6,000 damage. Uh, six, uh, we got seven hits out of eight, which is pretty good accuracy. Unfortunately, one bounce. This island is a pesky and in the way. But hey, look. He's coming back into range of our torpedo. Oh, he's actually turning back all the way around. Can we get another kill with the torpedoes? Let's find out. So we launch another set of torpedoes. Nah, I think he's going to be dead by the time they get there. Never know. Ah, he beached himself. Totally meant to do that. I'm 99.9% .9 sure he meant to do that. Okay, so Mr. Pepsi Cola, we'll switch to... Well, we were going to switch to you. I'm being proxy spotted, I'm presuming, by the uh, the Belfast, because there's nothing else that's really able to... Well, okay, I, I lied. It's probably this New York that's actually behind me. Yeah, totally on purpose. I don't believe you for 10 milliseconds. He's popped smoke? So you're going to sit there? All right, dude. Don't threaten me with a good time. Nothing sh nothing's able to really shoot at me at this point. Pensacola fires his parting shots, but misses. And now we've got this poor Belfast in a really, really sticky situation. So we got HE loaded because, uh, let's be honest here, HE at this range is probably better, unless he's presenting a nice juicy broadside profile. Of interesting note, guess what Belfast doesn't have? Torpedoes. So that means down he goes. <laughs> All right. So now we got a New York over here. We got ourselves some destroyers, and we've got some smoke to conveniently hide in. Thanks, Belfast. 
You never knew that you were going to help me more than you were going to hurt me. We are up to 37,281 damage. And we are getting to within the, what I'm going to call the danger zone of dealing with a New York. So New York is a brawling battleship and, well, brawling, I use the term loosely. Obviously, the the Kaiser and Koenig are much better, uh, much better ships for brawling than, uh, than the New York is. However, the New York is no slouch. It does get extremely accurate at the close ranges. And they've recently buffed its range. Part of that was the stealth fire removal. And so we've got the opportunity here to really, really, really punish him. Now, he just fired off a salvo. You saw that with the, the black smoke that was there. That gives us a pretty good chance to make this run and make it stick and work. Got HE loaded. Let's see if we can't bait out a damage control party to get a flood. Yes, we got two fires going. So if he doesn't, if he doesn't put it out right away... He is going to end up burning. If he does put it out right away, that means when I launch torpedoes and they hit, he is going to end up burning or uh, flooding to death. But he is burning, burning, and burning. I wonder if he has this weird burning sensation. He should go to the doctor about that. <laughs> so we've managed to launch torpedoes. Those favorable arcs mean that we can do this. Whoosh! Swing and a miss! <laughs> And we're going to continue to fire at him, distracting him, praying to heck that he does not see the torpedoes until it's far too late, which it looks like it's going to end up being. And I definitely don't recommend doing too far of a turn there. Yeah, look at that. You're dead. That would have been, yeah, three hits on the torpedoes. Mm -hmm. 72,651 damage. Three kills, four torpedo hits. So that's uh, kind of the end of this match because all that's left is two destroyers and a carrier. But we are actually going to continue on um, with this fight because what will end up happening here is we're going to see that their carrier is going to make a beeline here for the south because he thinks that nobody's left over here. Surprise! Guess who is? Um, part of that was uh, just being in the right place at the right time to actually do that and had this actually carried on past the the, the timing mark here uh, we would have gotten a little bit more damage in this game of interesting note we did get five secondary hits i'm curious to see how much damage they do at the end of this match we also got a flood which eh, i'm surprised we didn't get more floods than that but you can see here their their carrier is definitely making a beeline towards us so we're going to go on the inside of these islands to kind of cut the distance a little bit here. And we are capping their point. Now, I don't know why they decided to cap the point. We've got mo way more ships. We've got way more points. We've definitely got the advantage here. So there's no need to be in the cap if you can avoid it. We are going to shoot at this Mahan as he's going away. Uh, and you'll see here the, the long-range shell arcs and how disgustingly bad they are um there's the independence he's coming south keep on coming we got fubuki she's out there fubuki chan is escorting her carrier which is kind of nuts like seriously <laughs> um you don't exactly have the world's greatest aa at, at tier six in fubuki you also don't have defensive fire so that really also doesn't help your situation any down goes the mahan and now it's time to get our hunting on because we have eight minutes left in this match. However, we are capping. <laughs> yes, that's Fubuki Chan is escorting her uh, her carrier over there. And we are about to be in range. Thank goodness. So let's get this ball rolling. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a carrier kill out of this mess. Carriers dodging torpedoes, managed to dodge the one, and we're firing at long range. Uh, yeah. Oops, I missed. <laughs> I missed by a lot. Not, not, not even like a little bit, like a lot. It's really hard to get used to these guns. You know, I played about 11 battles in this ship, and, and I, the gunnery really is difficult. In, in case you were wondering, I also played a couple battles in public test a long time ago. Um, not much has really changed since... Wow! Carrier just got Shreked. Well, Mutsu showing that she's not interested in that independence BS. <laughs> okay, so it's time for us to shoot at Fubuki. Maybe we can get Fubuki down. Maybe? Looking good? Ugh, what? 
RNG, why you do this? Why you do this? Oh, we're just not gonna... Nope, I have... Yep, and she's dead. So we probably would have gotten that fourth kill there, but nah, it is what it is. So overall, you know, uh, 72,652 damage, three kills, four torpedo hits, etc. Uh, we are going to end up second on the team with 1,249 base XP. Detailed report, credits and XP screen. Overall, York is all right. I'm not a huge fan of it. It won't stay in my port. I think actually I prefer Pensacola, but that said, I do recognize that Pensacola is also a much weaker ship than, uh, than York is. Uh, but York isn't a bad grind. It's certainly not as bad as old Pensacola grind was. It's definitely not as good as Fiji is. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.